Hi everyone, I'm here with a Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Layla, thank you so much for sending that picture of the park close to where you live. We, I showed it to Sherm as well, and I saved it so I can actually get it made off and um, have a picture of Finland. So Layla lives in Finland, and she's my really good friend and sister, and she shared a picture with me on Facebook today of a really pretty park close to where she lives. It's really beautiful and it make me feel special to have a piece of where you're from you know what I mean and I got a question have you been getting the um, cards that I send you and stuff for like I think Easter might have been the last one I'm not sure are you getting those because I just want to make sure you're getting them because I know I've sent a few things and you didn't mention it so I didn't know if you received them or not so please let me know if you're getting my uh, cards and stuff so I'll know I'm not just sending them to the wrong place or something. So I'd really appreciate that. And thank you again so much for the picture. I hope you don't mind that I'm getting it made off. I didn't think you'd mind. I get it off and put it in my um, friend uh, album that I have of my friends that send me pictures and stuff from where they live. I'll put it in there. That's very special to me. I had a good friend named Hillary. And we had a lot in common. This was years ago now. Um, <coughs> she had got married to a cool guy that was just out of jail. And anyway, they were fighting and everything. And I got a bunch of her pictures and stuff that she sent me in there, you know. And she ended up going in the woods and killing herself one day. I still send, you know, her mom, and then a Christmas card every year. But I still think he had something to do with it, you know. She's really upset over him. They got married, and he was wanting a divorce. And I didn't get a chance to even write her in time. I kept writing and writing, and there was no response. And then one day, you know, I felt in my heart something's not right here because she's not writing me back or anything, and she always did. I get a letter from her mom, and I knew then that something happened. And that those pictures really mean a lot to me. Maybe one day I'll show you guys my album. But right now it's kind of hard still, you know? She loved to collect unique vases, flower vases, and I remember that so much. Anyway, I'm sorry. Back in memory lane here. Please keep the following people in prayer. Luke Boggs and his mom, Bridget. I have not had an update today, but yesterday was going to be a very hard day for him at the hospital. So please keep them in your prayers. Please pray for Joyce Light. I think I told you yesterday, but in case I didn't or you forgot, I finally heard from her. She fell, she's 84 years old by the way, she's a dear friend of mine in Sherms. She went outside on her porch and fell. Her, luckily she was able to crawl back in the house and call her son, which doesn't live far away, and him and his wife came over and um, she had blood all in her hair. They had to help her get out. And they took her to the hospital. She broke her pelvic bone. So she can't get around without a walker right now, and I know that's probably driving her crazy. So um, it's only been one week, and it's going to take six weeks, they said, before her pelvic bone would be healed or whatever. And with her being older, it scares me because a lot of times, you know, when old people break their hips and stuff, it's just like they go downhill after that. And I really, really hope that doesn't happen to her because she's very independent and in good health otherwise. She really is. She's in better health than we are. I'm glad she does is doing good, but please keep her in prayer because I'm sure she's hurting and lonely and everything right now. Please pray for Sherm, Rhonda Karshner, Cindy and Jim, Dora Carper, Danette Rager, Layla and her son Emil. Thanks you again for the picture. Bonnie Jean, Elizabeth Jeffries and her grandson Dominic, and Jimmy Myers. Jimmy's doing good at work. So that's good. He likes his new job. His mom works there with him. They're both working at Royal King and Chilla Coffee. It's like a big flick. 
if you have a tractor supply or a farm fleet, you know, and like a kind of like a I don't know, an old country farm store. It's huge, but I've never been in there. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, Sherm's having trouble breathing today. That's what he's doing over there right now, taking inhalers. The um, the smoke that we're getting from Canada is making the air all gray and stuffy and everything here. And they said, which is bad for me, because they said people with lung issues, asthma and all this, it's going to be really hard on them when they go out. And I, we got to go out tomorrow. I mean, it's so bad in New York right now. They're um, supposed to be distributing N95 masks for everybody. It looked awful over there. So, yeah, it don't look very good here. And Bonnie lives in, Bonnie Jean lives in Canada, so please keep her in your prayers. I messaged her yesterday asking if they were all right and everything, and I haven't heard anything back from her. So those are the prayer requests. Today we're going to be reading Acts chapter 6, Psalm 126, and Proverbs chapter 16, verses 26 and 27. Okay. Acts 6. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained about the Haberic Jews, or Heberic Jews, because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas Romanoff, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedom, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the province of Sicilia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Stephen was a really good, good man, a good disciple. But, and you know what ends up happening to Stephen. He ends up getting stoned to death for his faith, for being a Christian, spreading the word about Jesus. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God, which is a lie, just like they had false witnesses uh, to testify about what Jesus done that he didn't do. Okay, these people are not afraid to lie. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, This fellow never stopped speaking against the holy place and against the law. Which is a lie. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Let me read that last part again, just so you can get this. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin, all these people that were judging Stephen, looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel, innocent, pure, like a child, you know. So how could they kill him? Right? 
and God gives him the words to say. He goes on with a big speech before them, but none of it helps because they stone him to death anyway. And his clothes were right there at the Apostle Paul's feet because he was the he was Silas. Si sure. Saul. I can't talk. He was Saul back then before he turned to Christianity when Jesus appeared to him. He persecuted the Christians. He was right there agreeing to it when Stephen got stoned to death. And you know, what a horrible way to go. But, you know, Stephen looked up and reached up. I think he saw Jesus or God and knew he was about ready to die. When they were stoning him, he'd done that. It's just sad that yet they can do whatever they want, the teachers of the law. They like giving people orders. They like keeping people under their control. Same as in the world today. You know, they killed Jesus. Why would they care about killing Stephen? It's because he had the face of an angel. They killed Jesus, remember that. They'll kill anybody. And they'll lie on anybody, just like they did. Okay, so that's where we're stopping with Acts today. That was Acts chapter 6. And our song is Psalm 126, a song of ascents. Can you turn that? Why aren't you? No, wait. Just make this. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for men. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the dev. Those who sow the tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. All right, guys, and that was Psalm 126, a song of ascents. And ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 16, verses 26 and 27. Proverbs 16, 26 says, The appetite of laborers works for them, their hunger drives them out. Proverbs 16, 27. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.